Hello everyone, season's greetings. It's that magical Star Wars time of the year again. Time for dorks everywhere to argue endlessly over a movie that I still, still haven't gone to see yet. But what else is going on this Star Wars season? I heard that there was a new video game out. Oh, oh. Okay, you know what, we're just gonna talk about the old Battlefront. Something that's really interesting to me about old-timey Battlefront 2 is how it became and has remained this weird little multiplayer icon. And I say that I find it interesting because for many fans, online was never a part of their Battlefront experience. I am talking, of course, about the console peasants. Now, I'm certainly not trying to say that no one played console games online back in the day, but it wasn't as prolific in the sixth console generation, especially on PlayStation. These games were still popular on consoles, though, so I'm willing to bet that for a notable percentage of Battlefront fans, this series was a single-player-only affair. Especially for people like myself, who may have enjoyed the first game, but never really got into the second. While I have played Battlefront 2, the only one that I ever owned for myself was the original, which never had quite the same online community that its big brother snagged. I'm also willing to bet that a lot of those single-player-only console dweebs are the same customers that EA's trying to sell their new online multiplayer-skewed games to. I'm just saying, they might be fundamentally misunderstanding a significant percentage of their target demographic. But the big secret is that these beloved Star Wars Battlefront games they're not particularly good shooters. Now again, my opinion on the second one is admittedly half-baked, but generally speaking, these are not terribly well-made shooters. They've got uneven map design, fairly aggressive auto-aim, poor balancing, there's a bunch of little issues, but what's neat is that none of those issues really matter, because Star Wars Battlefront, it doesn't have to be a good shooter. It's way too busy being an awesome simulator. Specifically, a Star Wars hero simulator. There's nothing particularly compelling about Battlefront's actual gameplay and the interaction actions that you have with the world, but the context all that plays out in creates a truly unique feeling. There are a lot of games, a lot of Star Wars games, that are designed to make you feel like a big cool action hero man or lady. But you play those games, and you get the sense that this is all meant for you. You're a Jedi, or a super elite soldier, or otherwise just a named pre-existing hero from the films. You mop up waves and waves of useless stormtroopers and robots because you're just better than they are. You're better. Even when the games try to pitch you as just a normal dude, usually you're so absurdly kitted out or so much tougher than all the other enemies that the odds are clearly stacked in your favor. This whole game is built around you. This is not the case when you're playing Battlefront, even on single player. You have all the same stats and weapons and abilities as all of the other folks. The only thing separating you from them is raw skill. Also bad AI, but when you're playing it and having fun, it feels like it's raw skill. See, in reality, the AI in this game is pretty dumb, and even if you crank the difficulty way up, your auto-aim and general, you know, human skills are gonna ensure your KD comes out to some hilarious figure. But you don't feel like you got that because you're a super soldier, or a special space wizard. You're just a guy with boots on the ground, just like all of the other guys with boots on the ground, only you're way cooler. By putting you in these huge battles, but presenting your player character character as a minor, unimportant, interchangeable part of it, rising up and being the best doesn't feel like a foregone conclusion. Now that may actually be the case when you're out fighting bots, but it doesn't feel that way to the player. Especially because even with a ridiculous body count under your belt, you can still lose a match if your dumb teammates don't take care of themselves. And also if you don't actually focus on capturing objectives like you're supposed to. All this comes together to make you feel like, yeah, you're just some guy, but you're just some guy who happens to be a main cast member of a Star Wars movie. You are your very own. Han Solo, or Poe Dameron, or, or, I, um, I don't remember who any of these people are. If you're willing to apply some extra imagination to the proceedings, then you can start to craft your own little Star Wars stories into this. You have some really basic squad commands at your disposal, which essentially just break down to follow me, stay here, and go back to your regular AI behavior, and you can use these on teammates who are in your immediate vicinity. This is neat because suddenly you've got a little squad of guys to follow you around, and if you're a dork, like me, then you start hearing those characters talking to each other in your head, playing out the scenario like a scene from a movie. But those guys are all gonna die. You're probably gonna die a decent amount too, but again, if you use a bit of imagination, then you can start to create a kind of roster of characters in your head. Even if it's just for the duration of that one life, I always feel like I'm 
playing a unique character who's stepping out from the cast of faceless extras and becoming the focus of this particular scene. What's especially fun is trying to establish reoccurring characters in your head. Like, you know, oh, that pilot isn't dead, he's just wounded, so I won't play as the pilot for the rest of this match, but I'll bring him back in the next one. I had a fun little story play out when I was messing around with this game earlier in the year, where I was a clone sniper on Yavin and the last guy alive on my team. I stayed alive until the match ended and then just kind of pretended that he managed to evacuate or something like that. I was playing Galactic Conquest and we got pushed across the map between matches, but eventually I started to gain momentum again and fight my way back. All the while, I was building up a kind of mythos in my head for this sniper who became a legend because he was the sole survivor of a massacre, and he becomes this battle-hardened badass that everyone knows about and fears. But the real fun came in when I finally got back to Yavin. As the match was drawing to a close and there were only a handful of enemies left on the map, I spawned in as a sniper. THE sniper, and I just kind of... walked around the temple. I put on Wandering Flame from Final Fantasy X, I listened to the rain pour down on the ground, imagined it streaking off the visor of the character as he walked around this temple, thinking back to all the friends that he lost here in that first battle. I had just created a whole narrative arc with a contemplative, moody ending by accident, and it was awesome. Now, you may still be wondering, what's the point of all this? Well, the point is that people like to hold these two games in high regard, but really, I don't think they're great games in the terms that people like to talk about them. They're fun, yeah, but they aren't good in the traditional multiplayer shooter sense. They aren't even good in the traditional single-player shooter sense. They're good in their own unique little sense that's especially nerdy. They're hero simulators that let you become an average Joe who just happens to rise up and become a hero without the aid of a script that dictates you must become a hero. And that feeling is kind of baked in at a mechanical level since the game was at least pretending to be a balanced multiplayer shooter. That's a really interesting feeling that I haven't seen many other games capture quite as successfully as these. This was just something I kind of wanted to talk about what with all the accusations of EA's new games being way worse than the originals. I've never really heard anyone talk about the original Battlefront games in these terms before, but I've always felt like this aspect of the game was the main appeal. Both versions are aiming for such different feelings and experiences that they're practically not in the same genre. 